Hey YouTube, sorry it's been a while. I had been having this stupid, stupid issue with my phone, overheating in the middle of taking videos. I don't know, out of all the videos um, I've tried to take, this has been sort of a long one because um, it takes a lot to kind of talk about, you know, what a conflict monitor is, uh, what an MMU is, and then also how to, um, you know, go through the programming. Um, it's, uh, it's really one of those kind of trainings that is ideal as a hands-on sort of um, deal. So if you already do work for a municipality, please, um, you know, uh, reach out to your reps uh, that you purchase your conflict monitors for. I'm sure that they'd be glad to come into the shop and you guys can put together a, a training day. I really um, uh, can't stress how important this topic is uh, to traffic signals. Um, it's just one of those things that you sort of just... You can't, you can't, um, you, you can't base what you know off of uh, a quick YouTube video. And, um, you know, I know that I do my best to try and teach and enlighten as much as I possibly can on traffic signals. But ultimately, all of the equipment is different. All municipalities are different. All of the local regulations are different as to how the equipment needs to op operate. Um, if you live in the United States, um, we are governed by what is called the MUTCD. Um, I don't necessarily feel like I need to give you guys this disclaimer every single time, but um, since we're dealing with safety, public safety equipment, it's very important that um, you gain a really good understanding of what you're doing before you install the equipment into the field and actually try to run it. Um, because when you are working with conflict monitors, you could very easily make a mistake that could wind up harming somebody um, and causing somebody's fatality. Um, so just keep that in mind um, and uh, let's get into it. Take you to the lab. This video is on CMUs and MMUs. I've been asked how they work, you know, sort of how to program them, how to set them up. Um, so I, I, I think this first video is just going to be a basic overview of um, what they are, what they do, and um, you know a little bit about how they're set up. Um, here on the right, you have a CMU, which stands for Conflict Monitoring Unit, and then back there on the left, you have MMU, which stands for a Multifunction Monitoring Unit. This is a 12-channel conflict monitor. This is a 16 channel MMU or multifunction monitoring unit, but essentially they serve the same purpose and that is to check for conflicts. Um, now they can do a whole a whole slew of other things basically um, for monitoring the traffic signal, but literally the most important thing that they do is uh, check for conflicts in the field um, as programmed on these cards. And as you can see in here, we have a card and there are wire jumpers showing which phases can run with other phases. Um, and so when we talk about a conflict, we mean a vehicle running in to another vehicle, <laughs> potentially. So, um, you know, a... Um, conflicting movement at the intersection, um, potentially getting a green green or conflicting indications, uh, which we definitely don't want. So uh, one of the things that we do when we're setting an intersection up is we verify which phases can run together and then we will solder these jumpers together in a TS2 uh, NEMA environment, that's uh, TS1 and TS2 NEMA environment, that's what we do. This is actually a 12 channel card that is made for TS1 signal cabinets. Um, it won't work in a TS2 environment. That's what those guys are for. But these are about as simple as it can get. And as you can see here um, 
on the left side there we've got uh, phase one and then all of the phases that it can run with so see how it says 1-5 and 1-6 so that means that phase one can run with both phase five and phase six which makes sense because phase six is the corresponding through phase and phase five is the um, opposite left turn phase so those two phases can run together without running into each other right um, then you see here phase two can run with five and six and that's a similar setup there and so on uh, phase three can run with seven and eight and phase four can run with seven and eight and so this uh, this configuration will basically tell this device that at very least those are the only phases that can run together at the same time. Um, all of these other phases, if it sees a green on this other phase with one of those other phases, it will immediately throw the signal into flash. So it's pretty important to keep that in mind. Then this guy goes in the slot. There are a few other settings here. I probably won't go through them all, but uh, SSM stands for solid state monitoring. Um, basically it is looking for a load on uh, individual phases. Now these MMUs are more capable of looking at many other things um, than these guys are. Hence the name MMU, multifunction monitoring unit. Um, bunch of different latch options. Um, these are all options that basically if it sees this thing present, it's going to latch in a fault, which means it will stay in flash until it's reset manually. Um, that's important uh, specifically in case you um, want to stay on top of a particular issue in the field that um, you know otherwise would reset itself and it would return to cycle. Um, if you want to try and catch something like that. If you take a look here, this was um, probably sitting on a shelf somewhere and it hasn't been certified. This says 18, um, but um, it would not go back in the field until it were certified on a uh, testing unit. Um, and basically what a testing unit does is it runs through all of the phases all of the indications and tests different levels of voltages um, it tests all of the conflicts through um, and just verifies that the MMU is doing basically what it's supposed to do um, before you can slap a sticker on it and you know print out a test report and keep that on file it's very important that you certify I think I have another video where I do um, MMU testing I uh, should probably do another one but um, so that's basically what a conflict monitoring unit does. Um, as you notice, uh, there are 12 channels on this guy because it is made for use with the TS1 cabinet. Um, TS1 cabinets, uh, although they may have that many slots, up to upwards of 16 slots, the PEDs are not represented by individual channels in, an, in a TS1 cabinet. Whereas here in a TS2 environment, they are. They have individual channels. And we'll get to that in just a moment here with the, uh, with the MMU. Um, as you can see, you have two main cables here, one of which controls the input and output, um, mainly just inputs from the um, cabinet indicating what the field voltages are. And then this uh, mainly provides feedback to the signal controller as well as power for the device. So pretty simple. This here is a serial port. Some of them are a little too old for this, but the serial port allows for you to um, hook it up to a software device, um, you know, on your laptop and program the monitor um, using software anyway. So that's, that's that. So I'm going to set the CMU aside here 
and then we're gonna take a look at the MMU. So now, um, if you can take a look here, I have this, uh, this is what we call a practice or test card. What this card is, is basically the same thing as a uh, standard MMU uh, card, program card, except these are all dip switches. Rather than having to solder the phases, you can just flip the dip switch and then it'll close the circuit on that phase program. And so as you can see, these are the phases that are allowed to run together. One and two, one and six, two and six, uh, three and seven, and so on. So, so you see the dip switches are set there. Um, comes in really handy when you're setting up cabinets uh, at the shop. As you can see, uh, this cabinet we are running um, a flashing yellow arrow. I know th those aren't yellow there, but these are um, flashing yellows. And uh, it is a full eight phase intersection uh, with four overlap flashing yellow arrows. And so the whole intersection is set up that way. And so the program is going to show that here on uh, this MMU 16 LE, which is um, pretty much the, the newest smart monitor that you can buy from EDI. There are other manufacturers out there. I know that NASTEC makes them, Peak makes them. Um, however, these are the ones that we uh, use um, in our area. Uh, okay, let us default this MMU. And then what we're gonna do is um, program it all over again for a full intersection with flashing yellow arrow. So see there I selected um, default. So okay, and immediately you see I have a skipped yellow clearance and it's seeing things it doesn't want to see in the field because the program doesn't match what the intersection is programmed to run. We have flashing yellow arrow. It sees something funky in the field so it did its job. You heard that click and now the signal is in flash. Okay, so we are gonna go right here into menu and I'm gonna go to set view configuration. I'm gonna scroll all the way down because this is defaulted, right? Flashing yellow arrow. That's the first thing I'm gonna program from a defaulted, um, especially on one of these uh, 16 LEs. Select there. It is not mode A, we run mode B here, so I go, I click next, then I click select, and then I select next, select next, select next, select next, because all of those were running, all 13, 14, 15, 16, okay, set, um, we don't worry about the red, yellow input, okay, we don't even mess around with that. Okay. So all of that stuff is done. Now I go back into the menu and I go into setup wizard. Okay. So you basically just next and select. That's all we're dealing with. Now we know that we have a full intersection. All the load switches are, all the bases are loaded. <laughs> um, phases one through eight are vehicle phases. 9, 10, 11, 12 are our um, pedestrian phases on this cabinet, and then 13 through 16 are all our overlaps that are running our flashing yellow. So here's what we're going to do. We already told this now that it's going to be a flashing yellow, and it's in B configuration. So unused channels, no such thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip this guy, select our ped, don't walk, signals monitored. Yes, select. Okay, now we know that they're on channels 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, now I go select. Select protected permissive turns. Now, technically a flashing yellow arrow is a sort of protected permissive, but since we already told it that it's a flashing yellow, it's not going to allow us to program 1, 3, 5, and 7 as flashing yellow. In fact, 
you can see as it cycles through, it knows that those are flashing yellows. So this one, we're just gonna click exit and then select next. And now these are the assignments, right? Everything that's being monitored here. Those are all the indications that it's gonna be looking at. So everything looks good there. So set, select. Okay, now it says new parameter set for dual indication red fail. Um, M Y R C. I don't know what that one means. I'll have to get back to you. Or if you if you actually know, if you're from uh, EDI, M Y R C and field check. Okay. Anyway, comment below if you know what that is. If not, I'll probably figure it out. I'll crack open the smart monitor manual and figure it out. But so we're good. We can reset. So let's reset, and it should take off running. Let's watch our signal run. Okay, it's serving flashing yellow on A and C. Now it's terminating. Okay, phase one and five are serving. Yellow, red. Okay, four and eight are serving with uh, overlap B and D. The PEDs are serving for four and eight. Okay, now PED clearance is serving. So all is well. That was a full cycle. Now it should cycle back around to phase two and six with A and C running. Look at that, three and seven. Okay, now two and six. A and C running, beautiful. Okay, full cycle, that is how it's done. We are cycling in the field. Oh, another important thing to note that these MMUs, they run alongside with this bus interface. Um, see the, the uh, SDLC network running back to the, um, to the controller and that allows for us to sort of have this really awesome feedback in the controller showing everything that's coming back uh, from the MMU. It's all looking good and if we go back here to our run screen everything is copacetic. So um, I'm going to do a little bit about uh, certification on these guys. Hey guys, my video got cut off. Um, that's perfectly okay because it doesn't need to be much of a professional operation here. It just needs to work. So I wanted to talk about certification. Now um, I'm going to take you over by where we keep our testing uh, equipment but I'm not actually going to run a test on this video. It just makes a lot more sense for me to sort of um, go over the basics. Uh, the main reason why we maintain testing when it comes to certification of conflict monitors is ultimately um, these are solid state equipment that are constantly working 24 hours a day under all sorts of, um, you know, weather environments and, um, you know, varying voltages and, uh, you know, so uh, once a year, most agencies will take the device out of the field and then hook it up to a machine. It is called um, a conflict monitor tester. Um, I am only, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that there are other testers out there, but I am only actually aware of one in the industry. Um, and it's made by ATSI. Um, if you guys know of any other ones um, out there, um, get back to me. Uh, give me a second here. I'm going to take you over to the testers. All right. So as you can see, we have a uh, PCMT8000. We actually have two of them here. Um, and we've got a little laptop set up. Basically, there's software 
that um, operates the machine, and then the software allows you to save the log from the test, um, or you can print the log out. Typically, we will print the logs after we've completed the test, and we fold them up, we put them on the conflict monitor. This can go in a filing cabinet, or you can leave it in the signal cabinet um, until you swap it out. Or you can even keep a stack in the signal cabinet if you want, and that way you have a record of uh, conflict monitors. Um, we also put these year stickers on our conflict monitors um, and MMUs. Um, so uh, that way we know that it has been certified for a particular year. Um, it's pretty important that um, I state that the main reason why municipalities stay on top of this is, you know, it's not that these components don't fail and then we find out because the signal goes into flash, but, um, you know, if, if there's one device in the signal cabinet that is going to keep people safe um, and maintain that um, some varying field voltages is not going to cause a green green in conflicting directions. It's this device. And so for liability purposes, we maintain a very, very um, solid record on this. Not only do we have a digital backup of this test, um, but we also keep a record of all of the serial numbers of the equipment that is in the cabinet and all the field. Um, and and uh, even a historical record um, and the reason why is if something comes up years down the road you know uh, there could be a court case that they request the records well then you have them right here um, in your file or wherever so um, hopefully this has been helpful I will make another video hopefully someday about how we actually run the test um, you pretty much just set it up with a blank card and you put some information in the software and then uh, click run and it does its thing. So hopefully this has been a really informative video for you guys. I am going to get back to work. Um, I have burnt up my lunch hour and it is time to do stuff. I will talk to you later.